Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 18th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Passwords, of course, always get in our way, and we know they don't really work, but we still use them. And one way to balance usability and security with passwords is password managers. Now, if you are installing and using a third-party application as a password manager, those applications typically go through quite a bit of pain to make sure the passwords are properly protected. However, on the other end, we also have still built-in password managers that come with your browser. And the question is really, you know, how good, how bad are they? And that's something that Xavier ran into recently when he looked at this in Google Chrome. The way this came up was that they had an incident and apparently some administrator passwords were compromised. Now, of course, the question was, where did these passwords come from? In this particular case, Xavier found the account names in uh, Google Chrome, and then he took a closer look at how the passwords were encrypted. They were encrypted, however, the key is exposed, and that's a very common problem when you're dealing with encryption at rest, where keys are exposed. Of course, a better password manager probably would have protected that key with a password or maybe even some secure enclave that many operating systems are offering these days. Good question from one of our readers. Why did Google Chrome not take advantage of something like Keychain or such? Well, uh, don't have an answer for it. But of course, browsers try to stay as much as possible cross-platform and they try to avoid sort of operating system specific solutions like that. Another question was about how Safari deals with it. Well, Safari does use the built-in keychain, so those passwords should be better protected. And of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, dedicated password-safe solutions uh, usually are treating this with quite a bit more care. That's why you often do have to first enter a password in order to unlock the wallet, which really means that you are decrypting the key that's being used to protect the password data. And Microsoft Security Intelligence has tweeted about a new way how SQL servers are being exploited. Now, the initial compromise appears to be just brute forcing. We have seen this for years, but then of course, the big question is what happens next? Now, sometimes an attacker would be able to just execute commands if that's enabled or if the attacker is able to enable this feature. But what Microsoft is observing now is attackers uh, taking advantage of the SQL PS.exe utility. This utility is a PowerShell wrapper and well, everything is better with PowerShell, even your SQL commands and it allows you to run SQL build commandlets. Microsoft is observing attackers then using this technique uh, to, for example, uh, do a reconnaissance and also to change the start mode of the SQL service to local system to gain additional privileges. Or they may also use uh, this utility to add new accounts and then add these new accounts to the sysadmin roles, which then of course gives them full control over the SQL server. So now they can, for example, deploy their favorite uh, coin miner. And Apple security company Yamp has an update on what they're seeing these days with Update Agent. Update Agent is Mac malware that has been around for a while. It typically relies on the user to install it. This appears to be the case here as well. The file names that they found were PDF Creator as well as Active Directory. So probably a user was, for example, enticed into installing the malware, thinking that it helps them create PDFs. Now, the malware itself is really just a dropper, so it's being used to install additional malware, which is uh, pulled from 
AWS and typically you end up with some kind of adware. What sort of changed from prior versions is also that this version is written in Swift. So they're going with the times here as far as Mac software goes. And they also install a couple of bash scripts, active direct.sh and bash qol uh, vgl r.sh and again they are pointing to an amazon s3 bucket and are used to download second stages in order to further compromise the system well and sisa now makes it official uh, we talked already about uh, this week that the psych cell vulnerability is already being exploited also sisa added the spring cloud gateway vulnerability that uh, was patched uh, about a month or so ago, early March, and it's also now added to the list of already exploited vulnerabilities. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And if I missed the story or uh, maybe got something wrong, well, uh, please uh, use the contact form on the Internet Storms our website in order to get in touch. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.